Well, welcome back to uh, another live stream uh, on the uh, Leighton Orient YouTube channel. I'm delighted again to be joined by head coach Ross Embleton. Um, Ross, uh, first of all, good to, good to have you with us. Um, I guess starting on Tuesday, it was, it was a tight game, but ultimately a bit disappointing, wasn't it? I think it was, uh, yes, is the answer. I think it was disappointing because of the manner in which we gave up the goals that we gave up. Um when you go to Forest Green, we know that they're going to dominate the ball. We know that they've got a real distinct way of playing. Um, I totally respect what they're all about, but we really felt we could hurt them. And I think, um, like I say, although we were without the ball for, for, for good chunks of the game, I think we, when we look back and watch the game again, we created, I think we, we said, six chances that we felt we could have or should have scored from. Um you know, one one is, as for example, the the bundle where we could in, from a corner where we couldn't quite get that little touch on it, but both went clear a couple of times. Um, Josh Wright had obviously his goal, but a shot from a very similar sort of angle and an opportunity. Uh, Connor obviously had the chance where he cut inside, and they done well to block it. And then um, what we all still and, and at the times, but now certainly still feel was a was a blatant penalty. So. Disappointed because we gave up the points by giving two set pieces away. Ultimately, that's that, you know that's what lost us the game. But we felt like it was a game that we should have come away from it with something. Uh, and going up against a team that are going to be at the top end of the league this year, we've got to look at that performance and analyse that part of it, and then obviously try to put right the things where we where we fell short and and, and didn't get the point that we we felt we deserved. Yeah, in general, though, I imagine you and you and your staff are very pleased with the upturn in, in form, but also points that are put on the board in the last fortnight. Yeah, um, obviously, we were first of all we were very disappointed with the points in the games where we didn't get anything after our isolation period, um, and but we did feel that we wasn't particularly far away. I think the only time we really felt we were off of it in terms of not looking like we were going to get anything was the Walsall game. I think both the staff and the players collectively felt like that wasn't a performance that reflected what we are trying to be about and when we're at our best. So it's been important to try to identify what that is and get closer to it. And we think that um, once we have and when we have in recent weeks, including the Forest Green game, we, uh, we've come out of it with points that, that, um, that I suppose we deserve from each individual fixture. I felt we deserve to beat Bolton, deserve to beat Tranmere, Certainly deserve to beat Stevenage. The draw on the night against Exeter is disappointing as that was in terms of when we conceded in the stage of that game. They're all probably fair reflections of those games. So, and like I say, we felt we deserved to to get something out of Tuesday. So, um, we feel we're back on track, and it's, it's minute details that help you win any game of football at any level, and that's what we've got to concentrate on because you can't always blow teams away like we did to Bolton. Of course. Um... Talking about obviously testing the league, Forest Green were a big one, but Newport will be equally big, won't they? Yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a great test for us. Um, and I'm sure everybody would have been looking at the cup draw. And people have said to me, oh, disappointing cup draw. Well, I don't really know what you expect from the cup draw. You know, this time last year, we were all um, suffering immensely by getting beat by Morden and Tiptree. So do we want another Morden and Tiptree draw? Do we want the team that have started and got off to a... Uh, a flyer in our division. I'm not really sure how you particularly analyse that. I think, thankfully, we're at home. We haven't got to travel to Wales. Um, we've got an opportunity to go up against another team that are going to be really strong throughout this season. They've got an, off to an incredible start. Been impressed with the way that they play because I feel that Newport have really evolved and and Flinney has added something new to, to what his team are about and the way that they, they try to play. Um, so fully respect the start to the season that they've had. But we're uh, we're always confident and ready to you know to give it a right good go in, in terms of going to going to try and knock them out of the competition. Of course, yeah. Um, obviously, in terms of cup competitions, Newport County have been a side that have proved they can be quite formidable. I think earlier in the season we saw narrowly they were beaten to to Newcastle. Um, so it's obviously not a, a blip, really. It's, it's something they're consistent about. So what do you think that that makes them um, such a good cup side? They've got good players. Certainly this season, they've got good players. They've recruited extremely well, been impressed with the players that they've brought in. Um, I think the one thing that you would always... One thing, that's not taken away from collectively what they're about, but 
Uh, I know that Flinney creates a really good atmosphere in terms of um, a good vibe and a good place to go to work. Probably, probably wouldn't be wrong in saying that he's probably learned a lot of that off of working and <laughs> playing under Justin. So I think they're, um, those things are, are massive. And then it's about bringing in the right type of, of, of characters and making sure that they're organised. And they were organised in a different fashion last year. I'm sure I wouldn't be wrong in saying, and, 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 and that he would admit that they were direct, they were aggressive, very difficult team to play against. Whereas this year they've really adapted the way that they play, and uh, and I've been impressed by the way that by the way that he's done that because uh, it shows that as a coach and a manager they're not um, not just set out to do things one way, and that's probably another way of, of being successful. And certainly when you come up against bigger teams or, or tougher opposition in in cup competitions, they find a way to win, which is uh, which is always a, a great thing to have. Yeah, obviously, it is, um, despite them being a, a League Two opponent, it is obviously the FA Cup this weekend. Um, competition that obviously lots are made about every year about the match of the FA Cup. Um, is there any particular memories of the FA Cup yourself growing up that, that make it special to you? Loads. Uh, but my favourite one that I always uh, relate to and I have been relating to for a long, long time and only uh, Orient and Dagnum fans would, would remember it. I remember being asked... Uh, on the television when we were play when I was at Swindon and we were playing Eastleigh in the FA Cup, um, what my, my favourite memory of the FA Cup was. And when I said that it was Leighton Orient against Dagenham and Redbridge away, it got a few looks as if to say, oh my God, is that really the one thing that you remember? <laughs> but 5-4, uh, mad, mad game. I had it on video. Um, not many people know what video is. I'm sure most of the Orient fans of a certain age, we all buy it on video for a very, very long time. And I, I was actually a ball boy for that game. Um, a very good friend of mine. His dad was a director at Dagenham and Redbridge. And we got to put on a bib and sit next to the side of the pitch, pretending we were helping in some sort of way. It <laughs> wasn't because there was a big enough crowd to retrieve any balls. But uh, yeah, it orient one five four on that occasion. And that's always... Uh, for a number of different reasons, but certainly the scoreline that, uh, that always sticks with it. But I think, obviously, like you said, that Newport have a recent history of, of cup knockouts, but I think certainly we have one or two of our own over the years that we can look at, you know, proudly, whether they were, you know, nearly moments or certainly the Tahoe goal and things like that, that, that we can also look back as, as you know, as proud memories um, for us as a club. And we need to strive to make more. I think that's the big thing for me with coming into this competition is that, you know, we, um, we've had two cup runs that we have to look at that at this stage of the season and say, we had a cup run in the Carabao cup and, and, and got unfairly treated in terms of the way that that was brought to an end, but we did ourselves to, to play against the Hotspur where we actually got to play against, play the game and see it. Um, we almost created a, a big memory for ourselves and obviously the start to the FL Trophy as well. We've we've got off to two good cup runs ourselves. So um, we'll be looking to build on that and, and try to create another opportunity to hopefully come up against one of the big boys like like we got in the, in the Carabao Cup. Yeah, obviously you mentioned the Carabao Cup there. Going into tomorrow, the, the lads are going to be motivated no matter what, but is there maybe an extra sense of, you know, wanting to put things right and, and get that, you know, potential draw in the third round? I hope so. I think so. I think um, I think the fact that we're coming up against a team that's very good at our level, it gives us a chance to really push ourselves to a team that are, you know that have got off to a fantastic start. So I think that will be at the um, at the front of the boys' minds. But I think yeah, at the same time, you know, feel we all, we all feel harshly treated, and we all feel as though we were really um, we've had that ripped from underneath us, you know, and 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 that disappointment probably dragged on for a little while. So. Um, certainly be looking to get over this hurdle first. I don't want to get too excited and look too far forward, but I think it's only a natural thing to do when you come into the FA Cup as you get all starry-eyed and, and start to dream about where it could get to. Yeah, of course. Um, you also mentioned the EFL, or Papa John's Trophy now, as it's called, um, where we'll travel to Charlton on Tuesday. Um, you've alluded to it before, but are you expecting to make some maybe squad rotation and make some changes there? Yeah, I think... Yes, I think um, obviously we have to analyse tomorrow first. We have to look at see how tomorrow goes. We have to look at the players physically. And I think that's something that everybody, uh, I'm keen for everybody to really understand and be able to associate with is that the players that are not in the team or haven't been getting on the pitch of late deserve opportunities. They need 
minutes on the pitch. You know, with this crazy, crazy fixture schedule that we've got, there's actually a big part of our season and our program that we have in place uh, from a player development perspective, but from a physical perspective that people are not getting. We're not allowed to have any reserve games. Uh, in training, we can't create match match scenarios because we're not allowed to mix with the youth team. So it does make the physical element of people's training and people's weeks very, very difficult to manage, not just from the players that play and making sure that they're all right, but for the players that don't to make sure they're physically ready. So Tuesday is a massive game for us to, to do that in order to give those boys the, the minutes on the pitch and, and the platform to perform in order to give them a chance to break into the team or be ready when they're called upon to play in the team. Yeah, of course. Um, just finally, turn our attentions back to tomorrow. Obviously, last season we saw some um, some good displays uh, from both Newport and, and Leighton Orient in regards to uh, Justin Edinburgh and remembering um, the man that he was. Um, the clubs have announced that they're going to be launching, uh, or should I say auctioning, um, two shirts from the game, which would be a great opportunity to raise some money, wouldn't it? Oh, incredibly so. Um, and I'm sure that like a lot of, well, all charities at the moment, certainly um, when we look at the fact that we're coming up to Remembrance Sunday, you know, there's so many charities that have been restricted in terms of being able to raise funds and uh, bring money in to support the, you know, the, the causes that they that they do. And I think the J3 Foundation have certainly found that, you know, the fact that we put on a game against Tottenham in the summer and no, oh, oh, gone. Still there? Yeah, I'm still there. Oh, sorry. My my screen's just gone blank. I'll carry on <laughs> talking. and hopefully you can still see me. Sorry. Um, yeah, so I think, like I say, it's very restrictive for charities and I know the J3 Foundation would have, would have suffered some of that with regards to the Tottenham game that we put on in the summer. You know, it's great exposure for them, but at the same time, it may, meant very limited in terms of what um, what the foundation could have taken from that game. So I think it's a fantastic idea to auction those, auction those shirts off. Last year, the tributes that were done were fantastic. As a coach, manager, last year, I mi obviously missed the uh, half-time presentations and, and tribute that, that Newport put on when we went away to them. But obviously, it was a fantastic uh, thing that we, we were, were able to open the, the Justin Edinburgh stand when, when, when they came to us. So... Um, obviously always going to be a real attachment between the two clubs, rightly so, because uh, two clubs that were meant immense amounts to, to Justin and obviously the same for, for, for Kerry, Charlie and Sydney. So uh, hopefully the, um, the auctions that take place for, for that will be, uh, they'll get as much out of it as they possibly can. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Well, as, as I said, we'll, we'll leave it there for now, but looking forward to tomorrow and what should be a, a great spectacle in the FA Cup once again. Um, Orient fans can obviously get your match passes for £10 from the uh, Leighton Orient website um, with the Orient Live studio starting from 2.30 uh, with Glenn Walkie and Andrew Butler. So, yeah, thanks again and we'll see you all tomorrow, Orient fans.